I'm uh, on the right hand side somewhere, right, somewhere in here. Um, I'm trying to record uh, the bridge here on the Lillite River in Pemberton and I'm tempted to go down uh, next to the water. Let's see, should I? Should I? Oopsie. Oh, that's uh, kind of not very uh, smart. But, oh, they put a fan so uh, can't go. That's a good thing that uh, prevents people from getting into the river area and maybe private property, I don't know. But it's a good thing for me, a good thing for everyone else. So I haven't been to the, uh, to the bridge to see the water. I just got here um, after work. And I wanted to see the river because they predicted uh, some higher levels today. And it's not as bad as they prescribed or described or predicted. Uh, if you look down there, uh, the river flooded the area, but it's far, far from uh, getting to the dike, breaching the dike. And um, it's no concern. So it's not going to be a long video today. Here used to be an antenna for a system that monitors the water levels during an earthquake or a mountain slide that could block the river and then suddenly release a huge amount of water. So that's based on their uh, previous experience with a uh, meager mountain slide or a uh, landslide, rock slide. If I look in the distance I see some uh, fog that tells you the cool air coming from the mountain is going to do some condensation and it's going to make some nice fog good for picture taking. Now again it's not much to record. I see the the water levels are dropping and we are on 29th of uh, June 2021. Uh, I think we had a peak yesterday or maybe today morning or something like that. And this is the monitoring station I was talking about earlier. Uh, I'm not quite sure if the, uh, this one is active. Uh, I try to talk to uh, those from emergency uh, preparedness and uh, someone from the department sent me an email sending me from one person to another person but uh, anyway there is a system that is kind of uh, looking after the river water level so hopefully the system works so hopefully someone is paying attention to that uh, in my field of work, I do work with similar systems and similar uh, radio communication systems and uh, I'm aware of what's going on with these sensors, but um, it's an internal thing. I'm trying to show you that there are people in charge here in Pemberton and not only in Pemberton, but the uh, Spanish Pemberton district who are looking into this type of events. And look at the river here, a uh, lot of turbulent currents, underwater currents. I did record earlier uh, next to the airport, suggesting uh, whoever wants to pay attention to stuff that the river is not friendly these days. If you see the water coming out from the bottom, uh, if I see the logs, that log is probably 20 kilos. But probably if I wait long enough, I would see a, uh, bigger logs. When I went to Lillet uh, Lake, which is about 20 something kilometers, no, about uh, 40 kilometers from here, maybe 30, 40 kilometers from here, I saw so many uh, like dead trees, logs and debris floating on the water. I never seen so many and uh, all those are coming from the mountains and um, yeah you don't want to be in the water uh, and you also you don't want to be a floating log um, right because the the force of the water would uh, break <laughs> your body apart 
and um, one day I'll share a, a story of someone in my family who was uh, washed away from a, a swollen river like that in different countries and uh, yeah it's not uh, a good outcome but again stay away even you think you're strong enough to hold your footing uh, don't get close to the river like that last year i went to a lake in squamish it's called a lovely waters lake and beside that a trail there is a a waterfall it's kind of a raging creek that is coming from the lake from the thousand something meter above sea level and it's coming down very very fast and uh, before i got to the trail i met a couple uh, young people maybe he was 20 something years old uh, solid build one of those adventurous types and uh, he showed me his knees and uh, he had bruises on his face and the story was uh, really intense how he went into onto one of the rocks like that next to the waterfall to get some water and um, the surface was covered with moss and was very slippery and moist and wet and he fell into that raging creek and he was carried away he they said about 100 meters down on the rocks and he managed to grab a uh, a branch hold, held himself while his girlfriend was trying to call 911 but there was no signal in the area so right here there is no signal you cannot call any emergency services and if you have a two-way radio maybe maybe someone is in the area uh, and could uh, call for help i was into an emergency situation around Skokomchuk uh, a few years ago with my kid uh, someone attacked me and attacked me and my kid and um, we tried to call uh, the RCMP in Pemberton and was no signal in the area and luckily I had a radio in my truck and I went to the next uh, First Nations town where they had a, a two-way radio so I called them on the radio and they called uh, probably in different frequency they called RCMP because they have an antenna on the balcony upstairs so they were able to call the cops and uh, they managed to stop the drunken people but I could not press charges because the fight was at, at night so uh, this is a, not a, for city people it's an, uh, a town for adventurous people and the natural elements including people are tough uh, most most of them uh, everything is nice until you piss them off like uh, you piss the mountain off uh, the mountain uh, is not uh, going to respond well the same with the creeks the same with the river uh, be respectful to people to the land to everything around here because uh, they can be they can get scary so letting you go that's the recording in uh, Pemberton, a uh, Lillet River uh, is going down, uh, discharging into Lillet Lake and all the way to Harrison Lake and it's reaching Fraser, then the ocean. It's a powerful story, powerful river, powerful water and uh, powerful nature. See you later, bye bye.